and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm going to be making a wintry soap using this fragrance. It's called Sparkling Citrus and Snow from Nurture Soap. Oh and it's really nice. It's like a really fresh but it does have citrus tones in there. I love it. It's really bright so it made me think of citrus and snow. Uh, <laughs> kind of a no-brainer, right? Um, so anyway, for citrus colors that I want to use are I'm going to use Love and Sunshine from Nurture Soap, which is just a really pretty bright yellow. And then with that, I'm going to use this Adobe Orange Mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I thought those look gorgeous. And then just a little wisp, I want to do some green in there. I'm going to be using Enchantment from Nurture, Nurture Soap, um, which I... I just thought it was beautiful. So just a little wisp of that. So we'll do sort of citrusy color swirl in there. Um, the fragrance is wonderful. And then on top, I'll probably just do a scoopy top with some little sugar pearl crystals on top just to make it kind of sparkly. Maybe I'll do a little glitter. I'm, I kind of like to leave it open and see how the soap's behaving and how I'm feeling about it. I, you know, artistic impression at the end. We'll see. Uh, this is going to be a goat milk soap. So I'm going to get my goat milk lye solution all prepped and off to the side and sitting. Um, and this fragrance does not cause, let me see, it says no acceleration. It says a light can tan discoloration. It has 0% vanillin. So I might put just a little bit of TD in the goat milk solution just to keep things on the brighter side. But oh, this smells fantastic. So I'm excited to use this. I'm going to get everything pulled together, get my hair pulled back and get my goat milk prepped and let's make some sparkling citrus and snow soap. So I get asked a lot how I melt silk in my frozen goat milk and so I'm going to show you this is about um, a quarter to a third of the volume of liquid in distilled water and I put a tablespoon of cane sugar in here and I'm just melting the cane sugar letting it dissolve in here into this cold water. Um, and then I will add my silk in here and it will just stay fluffy and then I'll put my frozen goat milk in and then slowly add my lye. I'll bring you along as I do it but this is how I dissolve the sugar first in the liquid here before I add my frozen goat milk cubes and even with this water being cold and the frozen goat milk it's still going to get warm enough to melt my silk and I'll bring you along as I show. I'll just speed through it but I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I get asked a lot. Um, if you wanted to um, just add like maybe even less water than this you could bring it to uh, like a simmer uh, maybe just an ounce or two bring it to a simmer and melt your silk in that little bit of water and then add that to your frozen goat milk that's another way to melt the silk because um, it does take heat to melt your silk fibers to melt your silk fibers <laughs> so all right the sugar's all dissolved in there. I'm gonna go get my lye weight out and um, and we'll, I'll come back and show you the frozen goat milk part. But oh, sorry, first I'm gonna show you my silk here. So I'm just gonna grab about a cotton ball size of silk and just plop it in here. And it's not gonna melt because this is cold. So it's just gonna sit in here and wait while I get the lye and the goat milk in. So there's the silk. All right, so I've got my frozen goat milk in here and my little blob of silk is down in the bottom. Let me see if I can tip you a little more there. And here is my measured lye solution, lye, not solution, just the lye crystals. So just gonna add those slowly and stir and stand back from the fumes. There's my silk blob, if you can see it. Um, so anyway. Just gonna stir this, add a little bit at a time, and it'll start uh, melting down that goat milk. It's just amazing the chemical reaction between the sodium hydroxide and a liquid um, and the heat up that happens. It's pretty, pretty awesome chemistry going on, and you definitely don't want to mess around with it. And it's uh, it's it's cool, but you know, be careful. So you can see how fast that goat milk is melting. Um, my silk is not melted yet, but it's starting to get mushy. The fibers go from being, you know, stringy to kind of blobby. They go through this sort of jelly phase and then they melt out smooth as it heats up. So, um, and once I feel like all the lye crystals are dissolved, I go ahead and add a little more. So, and I'm adding this a little bit fast. I'm not patient. Um, I know if you don't have the silk in there or you have your silk pre-melted, you can go very, very slowly and it will stay a nice light color. I tend to get impatient, add my lye quickly, and then the 
it heats up and this goat milk will turn a beautiful golden buttery yellow because it's getting very hot. Um, but if you're patient and go super duper slow and you've pre-melted your silk, you can do that. So there's my silk. It's sort of a, well, let me see there. It's sort of a jelly blob right now. So it's not melted yet. So after all the goat milk is um, melted and the silk is melted and everything, I have my sodium lactate that I will add in here after everything is all done. Um, the lye is all dissolved, the ice is all melted and everything's ready to go. Then I add the sodium lactate. And uh, you can add sodium lactate at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils if you want that much or a little less. So that is nice and hot. The silk is melted. It's not in here anymore. And the ice is almost all the way melted. So there is my goat milk lye solution. Now I am going to um, add my sodium lactate and I will add a little titanium dioxide to this because this fragrance does discolor uh, to a tan and I want things to be on the lighter side. But um, that's just my personal preference to do for this batch. You don't necessarily have to do that. Even though it's this buttery yellow, um, after it saponifies and makes soap, it will be a nice beigey white color. So, you know, it won't stay this color in your soap. All right, I've got everything ready to go. The oils and butters melted, cooled. And to this, I have uh, organic colloidal oats, kale and clay, and the fragrance. And then over here is the goat milk lye solution, which does have the cane sugar melted in the water first, tuss of silk fibers, and some sodium lactate, and a teaspoon of titanium dioxide. So that's what's going on in there. Um, I've got all of my colors in their buckets already dispersed with just a teeny bit of water to sort of make mi mixing them easier. Got those all gorgeous colors. And what I've decided to do on the top, I was thinking about it and all the bright colors, and I just want to do some random piping, just little dots and stars and things. So I have my piping bags all ready to go. So we'll just see. I just wanted to get creative and make the top just sort of random little stars and things. And then I will put down my sugar sprinkles on top. I just got these at Walmart. Uh, actually, in the wedding cake decorating is where I got these very inexpensive and they're just nice crystally sugars to add some you know to kind of go with the sparkling citrus and snow theme of the scent which is really nice this is a very bright um, it's not super fruity even though it's a citrus um, it's it's just neat it's a complex sort of bright minty fruity combo but it's not candy smelling at all if that sounds it's not sweet that's what I'm trying to say there's no sweetness to me in this it just smells um it's nice it's like a mature uh <laughs> fruity sensation <laughs> so i'm going to go ahead and run this through the strainer because i did rush my lye with my goat milk there may be a little bit of scorched bits that i just want to catch and make sure it doesn't go through um, when you add the lye quick like i do you can get some little um, of the butter fats get a little scorched in there and it's no big deal it doesn't hurt your soap but it makes little dots in there and i don't want that so I'm just running it through here to catch them. I don't know if you can see, but just those little bits. So anyway, there's that. I'm gonna hand stir this to emulsion and then uh, we will proceed with the stick blender as needed. Nice full container. Actually, I'm gonna turn it this way. There we go. Hopefully we won't get any ricine or anything too funky. It's a little bit of separation. Not bad. If I need to run the stick blender, I will. Oh, there we go. It smoothed out very quickly. That was not even bad. All right, just going for emulsion. I'm gonna split this off into our beautiful, vibrant colors. These are really happy combo of colors, I think, as I was getting them prepped in their little dishes here. I'm like, wow, this is really gonna be bright and pretty.
the next day, let's get into this wonderful sparkling citrus and snow. And this fragrance um, didn't morph, it stayed very strong, so it smells great this morning. Uh, anxious to see how the inside came out, that top. I just was doing random little swirls and stars and things, just had fun doing it. I didn't really um, have a direction, but I think it just looks really happy and sparkly. I like how the little sugars came out on there. So let's get in here and see what we've got on the inside. Oh, that's pretty. Swirly. I think the colors really go along with the fragrance and um, that ivory color of the goat milk is pretty. Um, I'm glad I added some TD in there to keep it light. Very happy with these. Yeah, sometimes color schemes and fragrances just match up well and I think this is one of those times. I think it um, the colors represent the fragrance very good. And of course the colors are a little more muted and not as vibrant because I had added the TD to the um, goat milk lye solution so that's why they're almost um, they're muted and pastel and not vibrant but I like that. 